Hello everyone and welcome to another naval action video with Ryan GB. Now this battle is going to be an interesting one. This is a 1v1 one one, uh, of a small ship versus a bigger one. I'm in a brig with uh, six pounder uh, guns and my enemy is a surprise frigate. Now there's little to choose between both ships. The surprise is much much better as a ship. It's very maneuverable, has pretty good weapons. Uh, and well, I'm more maneuverable, but um, I don't have a lot of health, I don't have a lot of armor, I don't have a lot of weapons, I'm outgunned, out, uh, out everything, I mean, <coughs> except for maneuverability, I'm more maneuverable, more nimble than a surprise. The initial setting is really bad, uh, that guy has the wind. I couldn't win the wind uh, gates and it's impossible to deal with a larger ship if you don't have the wind gates. In fact, it's very difficult to mm, win a game against a well-driven uh, surprise in a brig because it's such a great ship, really. In this particular case, I'll be the first to admit that my adversary wasn't really good. Um, didn't use uh, manual sails, didn't do what I would say good tactical calls <coughs> but I think this um, video displays pretty well what you should do when you are in a smaller lighter ship versus a bigger one that's less maneuverable now the first thing I have to do here is obviously win the with gates I simply can't what I'm doing right now is trying to uh, get him angry I'm trying to provoke him into coming directly for him for me because the only way for me to win the wind gates is to um, well is for him to come for me and at that point I might be able to well end in the position where the wind is behind me and I'm between the wind and him this is very important you need the wind gates when you are in a later ship otherwise the only thing you can do is run but of course <coughs> running is also not an option completely in, in the beta because in the alpha because we have this barrier that if you cross it, two minutes later, you are dead. So, sooner or later I'm going to reach that border and I can't cross it. And I'm struggling hard, really, to put some shots on this guy to get him angry or to provoke him into coming for me. But he's not doing so. He's just, just doing a merry trip of uh, pleasure up there. I'm putting some ranging shots, some long range gunnery but of course these are six pounders i'm going to <laughs> need a lot of shots like that to do anything other than yeah put as a small dent on him and here he comes still unsalanted so i'm coming close to the border and i decide i don't want to come any closer to it so i start moving backward uh, away i put a couple of um, rear shots there but to, i mean it, they are more testimonial than anything else because in the back I have carbonates and those things have no range. So, well, right now what I'm doing is moving away, trying to lure him into finally turn towards me and come for me. And seems slowly he's doing so. And here what I'm doing, as you can see, I'm crossing my sails. I do this as a tactic to not accelerate away. away. You can see that I have the wind in my back, but I'm actually decelerating, not accelerating. I'm trying to lure him into come, me, come for me at full speed, while I'm not at that high speed. Okay, now he turns for me, now I normalize my sails, accelerate while doing so, but now he's coming for me. And at this moment he's almost as fast as I am, if not more, which is what I want. I want him to blaze past me and allow me to, well, get um, behind him and win the wind gates. Right now, of course, as you can see, the wind is coming from my port rear quarter and uh, that means that he's, he has it in his favor. Now he's starting to do some ranging shots, I'm going to move a little bit away, getting hit a little bit there. To be expected, you can't stand a ranged, uh, ranged uh, fight against a bigger ship. So now I make my move. I notice he's moving at top speed. He's just good in the seas at, uh, at top um, sail power, to say so. So I turn towards him. 
No, he's reducing to um, 50% sales, to slow speed. But still, here I have a shot at winning the wind. What I'm going to do is not rush up wind. I'm going to keep um, uh, more or less maybe 70 degrees of wind. And um, that will give me a reasonable speed, a process speed. I'm also pointing directly towards him, I'm offering him a very small target. And this is important because when he opens fires, I'm going to uh, just, as you can see, uh, go directly for him because that way I'm offering a very, very small target. And I'm going to also wave a little bit left to right, right to left to try to avoid his emit fire. I also pop one repair because I predict this is going to happen. <laughs> so I already had the repair going <laughs> before that. And now, finally, finally. I'm coming to a position where I can put a more or less decent shot on him. Now, turn towards him and win his rear with the wind on my back. I've essentially stolen the wind from him. He had the wind gate, now I have it. And now we can start doing stuff. Because now I have the initiative, I am the one who has the wind in his back, and I'm the one who has the wind in his favor. Before it wasn't. Now those rear chasers are going to give me a hell of a problem in this game. Also, you are going to notice that I'm suffering a little bit of flooding, but I'm not repairing. I want to keep my two repairs intact. I have no bow armor. I both my left and side uh, uh, sides are slightly damaged. I'm making a little bit of water, but what I'm going to do here is to switch between sailing and survival. Now sailing is very important in this matchup. You can see right now that I'm uh, reducing the speed. One of the big things about stern camping a bigger enemy is that you don't want to place past him. So you only want to go full sails when you are maneuvering or when you are closing and he's going at full speed. If he starts slowing, you, slowing down, you must slow down as well because otherwise you have a big chance that you are going to overshoot, place past him and then you will lose the wind gates, you will be at his mercy essentially. Now as you can see, well I'm using survival to reduce the flooding. Now and then I'm going to switch from sailing to survival to do that. Sailing gives you a little speed increase and a little bit of maneuverability increase but more importantly your sails com sail commands will be a tad faster as well. So I'm going to I'm not going to even bother with gunnery in this uh, particular scenario. I'm going to go between sailing for most of the time I'm survival when I need to reduce the flooding because the flooding slows you down and I need to be as fast as possible because the surprise is a faster ship as well so I have a guy who's faster than me and he's just running right now this is a little bit <laughs> what the hell I mean he's just running away uh, he's not trying anything he's just shooting his rear chasers now and then but at one point or another he, he will have to do some moves now, I spot that he doesn't have his royals deployed, his mm, uppermost sails. So that means he's, he's at 75% speed. He's at half speed, or what is called as half speed. Half is 75%. Now, I'm going full, and I'm slowly closing. That This is something I want. I want to slowly, slowly, slowly close in, but now he uh, goes 50%. So I have to be careful because probably he will try to make me overshoot, and I'm not going to fall for that. So you are going to see that soon enough, well, first I'm going to eat some real thoughts, of course, such is life. He's also pretty accurate with them, I have to give him, give him credit for that. But I'm coming closer and closer and closer and closer and closer. And as you can see, I'm drifting to one of the sides of the enemy stay, stay, instead of staying right behind. That's because when the moment comes, I'm going to go towards the side. Um, I am, as you can see here, I was slightly to his port side. Now I'm cutting towards his starboard. Gives me a little bit more room to maneuver. So, now, there's no time for ranging shots, I just unleash the broadside and immediately turn back towards him. As you can see, I have um, 
dropped a little bit of sales. I went into a battle sales. That's because I didn't want to go too far. Uh, I wanted to cross his rear, but not straight too far, because otherwise, when he does this maneuver, when he cuts back towards me, I would be a much easier shot. Now I'm mostly out of his range. Now I cut back, and I have the other broadside ready. And I'm going to employ my time to aim properly, because now I have time, and shoot at him. He's trying to win a shot, but as you can see, he's not using manual sales. With manual sales, probably he would have earned a shot. And um, that's because the surprise is very maneuverable. If that ship would be an even bigger ship, maybe a Trincomalee, I would have an even big easier time doing this. First of all, because the Trincomalee has no stern chasers, and those stern chasers are going to be the main of me. But mostly because the, the Trincomalee is much less maneuverable, and uh, it's much easier to stay behind him. The surprise is not easy at all, believe me. But he's not using manual controls. At this stage, I'm, I'm more or less confident that I can actually win this engagement. Mostly because he's not using manual sales. That means that the guy probably has earned his surprise in killing bots. And killing bots, honestly, if you play this game, don't bother with the bots. Don't. Just play PvP, because the bots are going to teach you nothing. Maybe one, two games to learn the basics of uh, aiming, the basics of how to maneuver, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's useful because, well, it gives you a little bit of practice on controlling your ship. But if you want to learn how to fight, you must go into PvP. There's no other way about th around that. I see a lot of people in big ships and they don't have a clue on how to use them. And that's because they are used to fight against bots. Anyway, he's going back to um, slow speed, 50% uh, sales. You can see, he doesn't have the top sails, nor the uh, royals deployed, so I'm going to cut again across his rear. This is um, not the best range. I have double shot, that has a very limited range, but I am still in range to unleash my shots here. As soon as the broadside is unleashed, uh, immediately back to the initial course. So... Back I go, back I go, manual sales to increase my turn rate and stay in his back. Of course you can say that, you can think that this is easy, this is actually not that easy. <laughs> Especially with a guy who knows his trade and knows how to maneuver. Now a very important thing, I spot him turning up me. He's going directly into the wind. Which is a good news, in one hand, because he's not using manual sales. Probably he has no idea on how to tag, and that's going to stop him cold there, and it's going to give me a couple of very good shots. But it's also a very bad news, because while he's upwind, he's not moving. And again, the key to stern camp a bigger ship is not going past him. Now, if you go directly behind him to stern camp him, you are forced to go upwind, and you will see that that has a secondary problem later on. But first, we can see that the guy is almost stopped. He's almost on, he's on irons, essentially. And I'm taking my time. I, there's no rush here. I don't want to rush things. I want to settle my course perfectly, be patient, do things properly. Because right now, he can't aim his guns at me. I mean, he's... Actually, he's not even aimed directly at, at the wind. He's not made past the point of the wind. So he's not going to fall to the other side and aim at me anytime soon. So I take my time. I go to the point where I can aim my guns. And I do so. Now, of course, comes the complicated part. He's already moved through the wind. And I have to go through the wind. I have to tack. But while tacking, as you will see, and I had to do it pretty quickly because otherwise he's going to destroy me with his guns. While tacking, I'm going to lose the wind advantage for a second. Right now I don't have the wind, I don't have the wind gates anymore. So I have to be very careful with my maneuvering if I want to stay behind him. Because as you can see I can't follow him. He has made a move, I can't directly follow him, following the same path he has uh, made. I have to use a little bit of geometry and tactical thinking here to recover the position I had. 
And that's what I meant when I say that uh, him going up wing was good news and bad news. Good news because, well, going up a wing will give me a very good shot, and bad news because if you don't know what you are doing, then you are going to be into deep and serious trouble. In this situation, I repeat my first move. I go directly for him, aiming a little bit through his rear to cut towards his rear. Uh, he's missing most of his shots. Again, not the best player. Um, a good player in a surprise usually gives no chance to a brig. But, well, this is the way to deal with a bigger ship when you are in a smaller one. And the surprise is really maneuverable. If you are in a brig versus an even bigger ship, actually your chances increase because the bigger it is, the less maneuverable it is. Anyway, coming close, recovering my position. As you can see, I'm already using battle sails. Deploying and recovering them because I don't want to go too fast. I don't want to go so fast across his uh, his rear that I come and pop up on his other side where he has a broadside that he hasn't fired yet. So recovering position on his rear. Now, other thing I just noticed: he's firing now anti-sail shot with his rear guns, and that's why I kept my repairs intact. <laughs> That's why I didn't use any repairs to repair my bows. Because if something is going to ruin your day against a bigger ship, in a smaller ship, is if the bigger ship starts shooting at your sails. Because then your maneuverability is gone, and when the only thing you have is maneuverability, that's a bad news. So, I'm still not using the repair, I mean, my sails are still more or less okay, but you will see that at one point I'm going to use my repair to recover my sails. Meanwhile, as you can see, switching from sailing to survival all the time to keep the flooding in control. So, again, same situation behind him. This guy must be pierced by now. Um, he's at 50% sales again, so I want to be careful, I don't want to overshoot. Of course, now, the thing is that I have slightly damaged sales, so my top speed is a little bit lower, so I can be a little less conservative with uh, retracting my sails. Again, coming off to a side, and now I go battle sails for a second, I actually go 75% because that gives me a little bit more speed to maneuver. Deploy sails again when I'm in into the turn, and um, there you go. A uh, pretty nice broadside on his back. Now, of course, the next thing is turn around as fast as possible. Using manual sales again to maximize turn rate and avoid at any cost his broadside. So, you can see I'm trying to stay away from his arc of fire. And mostly I do so successfully. I'm going to get shot here. But it's going to be very inaccurate fire because he's just he doesn't have me in the center of his sights. So keeping the maneuver, trying to cut as fast as I can again into the cover of his of his rear. He's turning very close again. And he's trying to fire. But I'm well off poor side. He he can't aim properly. He's trying to do so. He's actually going to put a shot or two close to me, but he's not going to actually hit. Coming closer and closer and closer and even closer and he's stuck on Irons again. He's coming close to the wind. In his desperate try to win a shot, he is immobile again. He's against the wind. So well, same plan as before. Coming close to the wind, he's stopped, I retract my sails. I carefully take my time to properly aim. Okay, that's a good place and at least my broadside. Time to start going upwind as well. But here I notice something. If you watch carefully, you will see that he's an angle, but he's not directly into the wind. He couldn't reach the point of the wind. He's not going to cross across and fall to the other side. He's immobile right now. He's backing, but he's not going to go towards his starboard. He's not going to go right. He's going to fall towards. He's going to fall in front of me, essentially. And you can see that right now he's already doing so. So I have to be on my toes here and essentially change direction 
in the spot, swivel my ship without even almost moving. I'm actually back, uh, moving back, back as you can see in the speed, using counter rather, using differential sails to drop me to the other direction and hit behind him before he can fall out of the wind and put a broadside on me. This was a very dangerous moment because. I mean, he not knowing how to tag put me in a serious, serious, serious uh, situation. Had I just tried to tag, I would have been in a world of heart. But instead, I fall to the other side, I complete my, complete my own tag before he can get out of irons. And uh, I'm already in the positive. This also gives me the chance to put another broadside on him. and fire away. Sadly this one was pretty short, but I was in a hurry. I wasn't really maneuvering. Now, he's going to earn that shot anyway, so what I want to do is to turn away from him. This time I'm not going to go directly for him, I'm going to turn away. Why? Well, if I do this I will offer a much sl smaller target. He's already proven to me that he's not a good shot at all, so by reducing the area he can hit, probably he will sink one two hits in. But he's not going to do more than that. Of course, that's a very important consideration because if I had kept on going in the same direction, he would be putting shots on my broadside all the time. And then I would be seriously, seriously effed up. But I saw that coming, I move away, he misses all his shots, he takes the range strong, and I'm free to. Yeah, you guess it! Turn around and go back for his rear. <laughs> now, the obvious uh, thing here is that you can go both ways. You can turn upwind or against the wind. If you are going to go against the wind, you need to do attack. By the way, I'm already repairing cells. As you can see, I plopped a repair to repair my cells because they were already pretty damaged. I attack as fast as I can. I know his, sta his port side guns are not reloaded yet, <coughs> or should be reloading at least. So what I want to do is to turn around and point directly at him before he's reloaded. And again, come at him, giving him a, the smallest target, target possible. Again, backing out of the attack. Trying to win the wind again. And come on, come on, I need that, that nose pointed at him and he's... Yeah. He's already reloaded, but just in time I have my bows pointed at him. Now of course you can think that aiming the bows of a uh, ship towards the enemy is a very bad thing, because it's wrecking fire after all. And yes, that's true, but in this situation if I offer my, star my broadside he's going to destroy it. So it's much better to offer a smaller target, take the chance of a wrecking shot and just move in your direction. And um, yeah, well, that's um, more or less. Right now, there's going to start a very long sequence of the game, which was pretty boring. Now, the reason for this is that the guy simply gives up. He gives up trying to fight, he just wants to move away. And he's going to shoot same shot with his rear guns all the time, trying to destroy my sails. Of course, I still have one repair, so I'm going to keep it for the moment I need. Uh, but this is going to be, what you are seeing is going to be exactly the same all across the map until we reach the border. So there's no really no, not really something worth showing here other than the guy shooting myself and, ye, and me just following him, following him be, without even giving a damn about it. All the time, of course, controlling the flooding, changing from sailing to survival. So what I'm going to do is to cut this part, because it's boring a sec, and come back when the action resumes. So here we are, um, very close to the border of the map. You can see this was all across the map. Uh, you can see I have used one repair, but I still have 76% sales. Uh, that's because the guy wouldn't do anything other than shooting with his real guns, which is honestly is, is painful to see a surprise misuse it this way. But hey, I mean everyone needs to learn, and uh, if this guy didn't learn before, well he has to learn now. Um, the, the strange thing is that he didn't even put distance, uh, he wasn't going at full sail for most of the part, he was just shooting my sails from short range, going at 50%, but now he's going to cross the line. And once he's crossed the line, he has two minutes to return. So, 
As I was waiting for this to happen, I have seen shot on my left side because you know he can use seen shot, I can use it as well. And right now, putting a good chunk of uh, anti sail shot will hurt his attempts to come back. Now he's going to have almost an impossible task coming back, mostly because he's going against the wind. And as we can see, we have seen before, um, this player doesn't really know how to attack, and that's going to make things, and doesn't use manual control, this is going to make his maneuvers really, really slow. He's going to have a very hard time uh, turning around and coming back to the, to the zone. Now, will be enough? Will we have enough time so he loses the game by staying off limits? Well, we'll see about that. In the meantime, what I'm doing is to use the wind to swil swing my nose around. And here, again, I use um, what I w you would call a gaming tactic. And it's actually gaming. I'm going to admit it. What I do here is absolutely gaming. He's out of bounds. He has a timer. In real life, there were no timers. But even so, I think I have earned my right to win this game. <laughs> so what I'm going to do here is to again take a shot across the bows. What I'm going to do, I cross the zone, my mm, clock starts counting down, but his clock has started counting down from a long time ago. And what I'm going to do here is essentially cut him. I'm not going to let him go into the zone again, no matter what. Even if he has the time, which I adopt, I think he... I honestly think that even if I didn't do what I'm going to do, I think that he probably would have not made it into the, the area again. But even so, uh, yeah, you can see he has no armor left. That means the timer has expired. But even so, I'm going to make sure that he doesn't reach the combat zone. How? I'm going to cut him. I'm going to just tell him, no, you shall not pass. <laughs> and he shall not pass. I'm actually taunting him a little bit, because I know he's Spanish. Um, and I'm essentially telling him that there's no way in hell he's going to go, go back to the combat area. So I stop him cold. And that's it. That's the game. Again, um, the player wasn't really good. He didn't know how to handle the surprise in a PvP. Um, again, well, that happens because when people learn how to fight against bots, they don't know how to do against humans. That's normal, that happens. Everyone has to learn at one point or another. Had I went against a um, good player in a surprise, I would have lost. I have no doubt about it. But I think this video still displays pretty well how to try to keep your position behind an enemy and become a real, real nuisance to him and have some fun. Because, if anything, stand camping is really fun. So, well, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. I hope you learned something. Have fun. Thank you very much for watching. And see you later.